Ahead tonight, a visitor's claim spurs a flesh-eating bacteria investigation. They're paid to fly, but six more Sky Bahamas employees get their walking papers. And police search for a motive in an overnight murder. The National Report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by BTC, powered by Lime. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keishla Adderley. And I'm Candino Knowles. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news, officials are looking into claims that a flesh-eating bacteria has infected a tourist while in Bahamian waters. Amidst a series of cases in Florida which ended in deadly results, the government is taking precaution. Today, Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources V. Alfred Gray said there isn't sufficient evidence for Bahamians and visitors to be alarmed, but that doesn't mean the claim is being ignored. Now, we must warn you, some of the images you are about to see are graphic. The flesh-eating bacteria first discovered in South Florida has reportedly made its way into Bahamian waters. This according to a U.S. visitor who claims that he contracted the infection by swimming in waters here. The bacteria is a rare infection that starts in the tissue just below the skin and can affect muscle and fat. The dangerous infection is most common in the arms and legs, and according to reports, the bacteria is fatal in 30 to 40 percent of cases. With some 10 deaths reported in Florida in recent months, Marine Resources Minister V. Alfred Gray says while they have no proof that it exists here, his ministry is not letting down its guard. We have heard of an incident which uh, the tourists claim might be uh, from a bacteria which he uh, um, was infected by in uh, the Freeport area. I have not been able myself to find any evidence that that happened in Freeport. We are looking into it. Now, Minister Gray explained that it would be very difficult to test the visitor who claimed that he was infected by the flesh-eating bacteria in the Bahamas as that visitor has since left the country. He also explained why it would be difficult to test those waters that the visitor claimed he was infected in. I have only the information to go on and the lab that we do have will perhaps test samples of water but, but that won't, you know, the ocean water keeps moving. It isn't stagnant, so that if something was in it today, tomorrow it might be in Cuba. As the reported case was an isolated one, Minister Gray believes the waters are still safe, and only if there was a reoccurring case would warning notices be issued. My understanding is they have taken a sample of the water from around which the man might have bathed. But like I said, there was nothing found in that sample, as I understand it. All that has reached me so far does not cause me to feel that there's a need to be alarmed about it. Concerned, but not alarmed. Now, Minister Gray says there's no reason for residents and locals to shy away from the water as the flesh-eating bacteria they believe does not exist on an epidemic level, but they are running the necessary test just to be on the safe side. Janae Noel Ferguson. ZNS Network News. Sky Bahamas CEO Captain Randy Butler confirmed to our news team that the airline's reconstructing or restructuring exercise is complete. Captain Butler says 16 people were directly affected with 10 pilots being placed on furlough and six temporary staff members laid off. However, he maintains Sky Bahamas remain strong and will continue to provide superior service. Uh, the furlough has been offered. Um, nobody has come. I think one person may have actually accepted or say they want to do this event. But um, as you know, the trade dispute was filed uh, on behalf of the pilots with the union. And so we're working through that to try to resolve that as much as possible. Our option and what we like to do and we pay that put forward to the union is the furlough because that's much more, there's so much ways that you could work that you could minimize the impact to the folks. And that's up to the union and they should have been doing that with their members. 
Uh, Captain Butler also explained the impact the restructuring is having on its domestic or on the airline's domestic and international flights. It's a very slow period. Most of the family islands, uh, hotels are big customers in Cat Island, Exuma, a lot of the smaller resorts are closed until the second week of, uh, they're going to open back up in November. And so and they were, the loads were down. So we had to minimize instead of on some days doing three flights in some destinations, we had to cut it back to two because it's just that season right now. There's not a lot of people traveling. That's why we were so hopeful for the holiday period. Labor Minister Shane Gibson is responding to customs and immigration workers who threatened strike action last week. The union, which represents the employees, is challenging the terms of insurance and to file a trade dispute for the non-payment of costs for officers who have to relocate for transport allowances and utility costs. Minister Gibson said outside of Cabinet today his ministry is willing to speak with all unions to resolve their issues, but he won't be threatened into making commitments that government can't afford. Everybody know that the government's revenue is not performing the way we would like it to. Everybody know that we cut back significantly on expenditure. Everybody know that we have lots and lots of priorities in the government. Health care is a priority for us. We understand why persons would want health care coverage, um, and that is why we are moving towards national health insurance. But in the interim, we will not be bullied into providing something we cannot afford to provide. And so if the union's position is that they want to strike, then we'll prepare for that strike. The country recorded another mur murder overnight, and police are now requesting the public's assistance in solving the shooting, which has left one man dead. According to reports, police received a call regarding a shooting at Carter Close in Yamakra Beach Estates around 1145. When police arrived on the scene, they found a man's body on the ground in front of a residence with a gunshot wound to the head. The victim was pronounced dead on the scene by EMS personnel. Police tell us that they are in the early stages of their investigations and have no motive for this latest homicide. The sentencing hearing for convicted murderers Stephen Dye Stubbs, Andrew Davis and Clinton Evans has been delayed yet again. It picks up tomorrow morning at 11.30. During today's proceedings, the court heard from two probation officers who revealed details about the lives of the three convicts in the probation reports. The court also heard from a, psychi a psychiatrist who prepared reports on Stubbs, Davis and Evans, a requirement as they're facing the death penalty for killing police constable Jimmy Ambrose back in 19. Meantime, Crown prosecutors have indicated that during Wednesday's proceedings, they'll call the Registrar General to provide a death certificate for the deceased and an officer from the Criminal Records Office to provide information on the previous convictions of the trio. A Supreme Court judge has granted bail to a 49-year-old man accused of raping a 13-year-old girl. Joseph Andrew Folks, a resident of Yamacry Hills, was arraigned earlier in the magistrate's court, accused of having unlawful sex with the 13-year-old between April and May of last year. He was not required to enter a plea as it is an indictable offense. Meantime, when Folks appeared in court today, Justice Vera Watkins granted him $9,500 bail with two sureties and reporting conditions. She also ordered him to stay away from the complainant and the case has been adjourned. In our first look at weather, tropical storm Lorenzo remain out there in the central Atlantic, but outside of our studios just now, we have partly cloudy skies, temperature 84 degrees, your relative humidity 71%, winds out of the south southwest at 8 knots, your barometric pressure 1,000 at 13.0 millibars, that's 29.91 inches, and it is steady. But stay tuned, temperatures around the family violence, travel and boating forecast is still to come. Well, coming up tonight, the Anglican bishops charge to the government and the nation. And at Venice, prepare to celebrate a milestone. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news is brought to you by Shell Helix Ultra. Performance you can see.